Everybody, it's great to be back here again tomorrow. It's Friday, Parashat Ki Tisa. Um, I'm sure you're all listening closely to the news, and in Israel, it's been uh, another difficult week here, just nearby Itama, the terrible terrorist attack yesterday in Eli. And um, unfortunately, we're in the, the situation here is that we don't, I don't know what's going to be the next moment. Like right now, I'm giving a class, I don't know what's going to be after the class is over. Literally, um, that's the situation, just the feeling in the air. Here in Itamar and other places, we have to get ready for the worst, go off a bid for another serious, um, you know, I mean, we can't say we're not in war now on many fronts. We are already in many fronts in war, but it can get a lot worse, especially in the northern border. Israel's very concerned, and that could really blow up. And if that's the case, you know, we're going to need to be um, self-sufficient for a few days with water and supplies here. And that's really talk um, in the community about getting ready and preparing ourselves for the next stage, go off a bid. That could be um, pretty much worse than we've experienced so far because of the um, 150,000 rockets that Hezbollah have. And, and of course, we know all their wonderful cohorts in Iran, who knows what they're plotting against Israel and other fronts here in Judea and Samaria, as we saw um, yesterday. But I don't want to, of course, talk about the situation. I want to try to focus first on, um, of course, it's connected on the portion and, um, you know, I don't want, I want to bring everyone's spirits up, not down, go off a bit, and our spirits are up, and I want to reassure you that, that we know at the end of this difficult period, there definitely will be a great light that will shine, and we have to just, you know, stand strong. And, um, you know, that's it, our opening message. Let's get right down to the lesson. This, lesson, this week's lesson, I want to um, focus. Um, I saw a very interesting shiur of Rav Eliezer Castiel, this rabbi is from Eli, by the way. I guess inspired of what happened yesterday to hear some of the beautiful Torahs coming out of Eli. And this rabbi is uh, one of the teachers yeah. that mentioned some interesting points which um, regarding the portion, which I'm going to try to bring some of those points and try to expand on it. And, and the very important things to be pointed out. And I'd like to begin by the words of Rav Kook. Rav Kook has, and this is connects to what's going on now here in Israel, of course, and the Rav Kook talks about the situation of the, the sin of the golden calf and how it relates to the present situation of his time in war in the world and things like that. He has an article, he has an essay, right, he writes called Hamil Chama, the war. And he writes about you know, the war situation. We've spoken about this essay in the past. And he writes, If it wasn't for the sin of the golden calf, He says, If it wasn't for the golden calf, the nations that dwell in the land of Israel would totally agree, make peace, would make peace with Israel. They would totally agree with Israel. Because they would see that God's name is upon us. That would, bring, that would bring within their hearts fear, but a high-level fear. The loita, fear of honoring, honoring Israel, because Israel is a godly nation. That would change the situation. There wouldn't be any war anymore. And all our influence would go in the way of peace. In the, in the messianic, like the messianic time. So if it wasn't for the sin of the golden calf, Rav Cook says, life would have been so much different in the land. We wouldn't, we wouldn't have had to experience all these wars and all the nations coming against us. garam, but the sin, the sin caused, this caused a, being pushed off thousands of years. Because all the different circumstances in the world are to bring about one thing that God's light in the world. And the sin of the golden calf will totally be erased. Everyone who sees Israel will recognize that these people are blessed by Hashem. And the world will be rectified in the path of peace. And the feelings of love and Noam Hashem and the pleasantness of God, Yuchash Becholiva, will be felt in every heart. Ula Deneshama, 
ולכל בהם תחיה נפש כל חי. In other words, every soul will live through, will be uplifted through this recognition of Israel when, when God's face will shine upon the people. And this is something that will happen in the future. But what's, what's happening today, we see the opposite. The whole world is condemning Israel, the UN, right, Israel. It was responsible for what happened yesterday in Gaza, which is absolutely ridiculous when, they're, when the, when the um, Hamas is, is jumping on the, the different deliveries, the humanitarian deliveries and shooting and creating havoc purposely so that many die to make, to make, to try. They'll, they'll, they don't care if they, they kill a thousand of their people just that the world will come against Israel and they could survive another, you know, after this war, survive again and come back again to, to try to do, do another massacre against Israel. But, so the hatred and, and, and attacking us on so many fronts in the world and the anti-Semitism all over, it's, come, it's, it's so powerful. Um, Rav Kook is saying it's because of the sin of the golden calf. So what we want to try to do is understand the relationship. What is the relationship of the sin of the golden calf to the reality that's happening today? You know, why, why is that situation? Why is it going to take so long now to rectify this? We're, we're getting closer, obviously. But, you know, what happened? What was the problem with the sin of Cook? Has a beautiful um, explanation regarding this. And I'll bring down the words. One of his uh, writings called Pinkasei of Cook. His notebooks. And he writes, you know, I would like to read part of this. And through this, we'll bring the sources down. Rav Cook writes, he says, HaMoldot HaShebetoleda HaNoshit Heim L'Tzorach Aliyah, right? When you see in, in, in humanity, in mankind, when there are situations of, of um, what's the word, Moldot, like going downhill, right? When, when, when the world, we see in the world, which I think we're one of those situations now, going downhill in the world, לו היה אדם לא עתיד לצמוח במעלה רמה מאוד, לא היה יורד גם כן. רב קוק says, if it wasn't for the fact that mankind is supposed to go up and be rectified, he wouldn't slide down so much, right? The higher, the taller you are, the, the, you know, the harder you'll fall, right? So the higher you can rise, the more you can fall as well. מצב הטבעי של שבע מצוות בני נוח היה מתקבל ונקלט. He said, the natural... Um, situation of the seven Noachai laws would just be re- accepted and we'd be done with that if the situation was. Omnam, but, but, akochotem gdolim, Rav Kook says the tremendous powers in the world. Al kochecha eno mekabel matzav shel klalim k'tzarim. So the world's not willing to accept it. Um, I just want to accept a few of these Noachai laws. Now, if we see this, it's very interesting because um, a lot of the those who are Noachides, you know, oh, one of the first claims of a lot of people studying, is, it's not enough for us, the seven laws, we want more, and this is exactly the point Rav Kook is making here. He's saying they would not suffice, they would not suffice with, the, with only the seven laws, right? They don't want to accept a few small rules. But they want to expand their lives of spirituality, and, you know, and materialistically and spiritually, they want to expand their lives. It's not enough. To be limited by just seven, those seven laws. Al Kain, Rav Kook says, Yerad Olam, Afilu Medin Bnei Noach. So Rav Kook says the world came down. The world had a, a falling, a falling down, even lower down than the Noachides. Right? They came below that level. V'toavot Eretz Mitzrayim Eretz Kenan Gadlu. So what happened was a monster was created. Right? The the abominations of the Egyptians. And the, and the Canaanites, as we know, as the, how the Torah describes those situations, that was a result of these powers, right, of just collapsing, you know, not accepting, not, not remaining, um, what's the word on there, on a certain level and complacent, but you either go up or down. And here Rav Kook is, is, is saying something very, very profound and very deep, and we're going we're to show this in the verses in a moment. But Rav Kook is saying, and therefore, God took us out of Egypt, and similarly what the word is using. He'ela otanu mi mitzrayim. God uplifted us out of Egypt. Afilu rak b'shfil she'ina mitamim b'shkatsim. Urimasim. 
די בניין עלייה, לשוב למדרגה אנושות מתוקנת. So Rav Kook says, if we take just a simple thing that we are no longer going to eat um, things that are not clean, right? The animals that we can't eat as the Jewish people. So we came out of Egypt, right? So it would, we, would, we can say just that alone, not eating those, those um, things that we can't eat, that would be enough to bring us to a more rectified situation. But listen very carefully what Rav Kook is saying in the next sentence. He's saying, Aval ein zedai, but it's not enough. But I took you out of Egypt. And coming out of something is much greater than going up. Now here, it's very important to explain what Cook is talking about. And I want to explain this. Um, in order to explain, let's first quickly give some examples. If we look in the, in, in the chapter in Exodus, in Parshat Ve'eren, in Exodus 6. So we see it repeats itself over and over again. The, um, the fact that God took us out of Egypt. Right? We're going to be taken out of Egypt. Okay, and if we look at the verses, um, there are many you can find yourself, Hashel Otsi means in Hebrew to take out. I don't even have to actually show all the verses inside, but I can, you know, just to give a quick glance to them. And I'd like to just show you maybe two of those verses where that, that expression is used. Okay, so we'll begin there. Let me just quickly open up my chumash here. Okay, so if we look in Exodus 6, verse 6, it says, L'chein emol levnei Yisrael, therefore say to Israel, Ani Hashem, I am God, v'ot seiti etchem, and I've taken you out, mitachat sivlot mitzrayim, I've taken you out of the trouble, the suffering of Egypt. That's verse number 6. If we look at verse number 13 in that same chapter, and there are many, I'm just giving you a couple of examples just to see the, the, the usage. In verse number 13, this you can only really see, I guess, in Hebrew, but you can see the translation of to take out, right? If we look in 13, God spoke to Moshe and Aaron, the commander of Israel, and Paro, the king of Egypt, to take Israel out of Egypt. Okay, so that's something very interesting. So we see in the, in the beginning of the story of Exodus, we're talking about taking Israel out of Egypt. Now, Fascinating, if you look in this week's portion, and we're going to see in, in chapter 32, and verse number 1, there's a different usage here. And what is the use? What is the usage? Vayar ha'am ki boshesh Moshe l'redid menahal. The nation sees that Moshe Rabbeinu is delayed in coming down from the mountain. Vayikahel ha'am malaron, so they gathered around Aaron, and vayamu ilav kuma seilano Elohim. And they said, make us a God. I'll go before us. Because Moshe Rabbeinu, this man that took us up, now here the usage is, took us up from Egypt, we don't know what happened to him. So right away, the, those who are sitting with the golden calf are changing the usage of the word to take out, but to take up. If we go into verse number 7 in that same chapter, 32, God says, to Moshe Rabbeinu, Moses, Lech reid, go down, why ki shichet amecha? Because your nation has shichet, they've done something terrible, right? Asher heleita me'eretz Mitzrayim, that you, heleita, you uplifted out of Egypt. Again, God is using that same word in reaction to this chapter of the sin of the golden calf. When Israel is sinning, God says, again, the word heleita, instead of using to take out, but to bring up, okay? And the third time that same usage is used here, if we look in chapter 32 in the first, the next very next verse, it says, they, they, they quickly moved away from the path I commanded them. They made themselves an egel, a calf, right? They gave this idol, and they bowed down to it, and they offered it to it. And they said, Yisrael, These are your gods of Israel. Again, using the word, they took you, um, they took you up. So what's going on over here? Why the sudden change of language? In the chapter, we're talking about coming out of Egypt. God was using the word, Lotzi, Lotzi, to take out. And here, when the mistake of the golden cap was committed, the, dominant, the word that's dominating you know, the page here, is to take you up. What is the difference of those two concepts? And that's exactly what Rav Kook 
is explaining over here. Rav Kook explains in, in, this, in, this, um, in his notebooks over here that when you're talking about coming up somewhere, you're going up, that really doesn't negate the lower level. It's just rising to a, another level, right? You're rising to a higher level. For example, when a person is on the second floor of a building, he's now going up to the third floor. He's not, you know, he needs a second floor to rise to the third floor. Right? You're going from one stage to the next. A child going from, from first grade to second grade, from, from, you know, going up, right? So it's not like you're being, uh, uh, you're just going up at a higher level. You're rising to a higher level. Right? You're going up. You're not negating the, the other thing. It's something, it's, a, it's like sort of a connected process, a continuation. But on the other hand, Rav Kook is saying, this is not the word hotzete to take out. To take out is something different. And he's saying that is the most important thing in the Torah, more than the coming up. Why? Rav Kook says, because the whole, the, the whole point he's trying to make over here is that coming out of something is totally, it's totally um, disengaging from the previous state. It's creating a whole new level that has nothing to do with the other with the other state in mind. So it's something that's totally different. That is a total yitzia, a total different culture, a total different goal. Everything is different. And that really is the deep concept of what the word lotzi, to take out. I may want to read a little more of Cook's words here. He says, Ki gam lo Rukh says, even if the nations wouldn't have sinned so much, but God still would have taken Israel out of Egypt in order to lift them up to a very high place. In other words, all the different le- levels of the world can't really survive without Israel reaching its, high, its level of Israel, its independence, total independence who we are. Right? And Rav Kook says, go on, Ube'egel, in the calf they said, Eile lo hecha Yisrael, asheluch ha-meretz v'nsraim, liot rak uma tevit. So they looked at Israel, those who sit in the golden calf looked at Israel as just a, a regular nation. They didn't realize who they were as a people, our special function. In other words, they did not look at all in Israel. They didn't look at themselves. The people of Israel did not realize their value, who they are as a people. And therefore, they just looked at us as, okay, we're another level. We're going up to another level. But they didn't realize it was something totally different. A new, like a creation of a by itself. And this concept is very, very powerful. It's brought down by Rabbi Dalivi. Rabbi Dalivi, the Kuzari, he brings down, um, when he's discussing with the king, as we all know the story of the Kuzari, the king who grew up as an idol worship and he abandons his idol worship and he turns to a rabbi and asks him for his faith. After trying different religions and he realizes his place is with Israel and he converts to Judaism. And, and one of the questions, you know, that the rabbi is talking about, he goes, you know, and he, he's talking about nature, and he talks about the different levels of nature. You have the inanimate objects, and then you have um, plant life and animal life, and then you have human beings. So, of course, you know, the rabbi is sort of um, um, you know, having a dialogue with the king, and he's explaining, he's saying, you know, let's give an example of the different, the different categories of, of, you can say, in this world. Right, inanimate plant life, right, animal life, and, and man, right, those seem to be the major categories. So, um, so the so the rabbi asks the king, he's saying, is there anything beyond the category of man? You know, so so the king answers, yeah. He goes, well, they're very wise men. So right away, the rabbi answers, goes, no, we're not talking about a division that's only accidental, right? What do you mean accidentally? Means like, for example. There, it's just a matter, it's quantitative, right? A person can know more, know less, but they're still on that same level. As, that really doesn't change the level to another level totally. So, so then the king says, if that's the case, then there's no, there's no level higher than, than a human being. And the, and, the, and, the, and the rabbi answers me, he says, what happens if you find somebody who's able to go through fire and not able to, doesn't have to eat for 40 days and 
you know, and he's talking, and his, and his face is shining. He's talking, of course, reflecting to the prophets, Moshe Rabbeinu. And the point he's trying to make, the kuzari, the, the rabbi is trying to teach, is that there's another level that's way beyond the four, the regular divisions of, in the world. That's another league in itself. It's something, it's another creation by itself. And that, he said, of course, is the nation of Israel, who is a nation of prophets. And that's the point he's bringing down. Now, this is the exact concept over here. If we were looking as just going up another level, so we're just going up another level. We're not, Israel's not, um, you know, going, it's not entering its own airspace totally, where it's, it's only meant for Israel. But it's still just another level. And that's what, that's what God was teaching us. To go out is to negate the previous stuff, right? Think about something. You tell someone to get out of the class, right? You're totally separating. And that's the point of coming out of something. You're totally disengaging from it. That is coming out. And that, in reality, was, was coming out of Egypt, what it was all about. Now, if we take this concept, which is so powerful, and we see, if we look in the, in the response of Moshe Rabbeinu regarding the Luchot, and I want to here focus on some of those verses here, if we look in Exodus um, 32, when it talks about, there, there are two, obviously there are, in this week's portion, it mentions the first Luchot, right, the first tablets and the second tablets. And we're going to see how this concept we're talking about is reflected in the first and second tablets. In the first tablets it says, Vayifen Vayeren Moshe Menahar, right, Moshe Rabbeinu came down from the mountain. Luchot Ha'edut and he was holding on to the two tablets. Luchot Ketuvim Bishnei Evreim, right, there was, these were miraculous tablets. They were written on both sides. Umizeh Mizehim Ketuvim. Now, how could something be written on both sides? If you would look at it from the front, and you'd read it, and then you look at it from the back, you'd read it the same way. So it was miraculous. The letters would turn around. Some kind of totally thing that was beyond anything that we've seen by our human eye. Not only that, it says, Valuchot Mas Elohim. It says that the, the, these tablets were a godly creation. In other words, it, Moshe Rabbeinu didn't go up with the mountain with tablets. God gave him something. This is totally a godly gift. Um, it's, we could talk about, you know, in the, in the world, everyone's looking for to see if they can find a different substance, right, of matter. We all know that you know, everything is, is, is in, in atoms, etc., every particle, right? We all know the atomic table of elements, but we have, they haven't found more than the specific amount of elements. But the question is, what was this made out of? What were these stones of the tablets made out of? Because they were godly stones. They were godly stones, which is fascinating. And, not, and we saw how they had miracles. And those are the stones that, that God wrote on them as well, right? Mikhtav, mikhtav elokim. Chavut aluchot. Something that we can't possibly fathom the, the amazing um, gift that was given with these luchot. And here Moshe Rabbeinu is, is, is um, coming down with these luchot, right? God is, and, and God right away tells him, of course, what's going on. Israel sinning. And, um, and as we all know, if we look in verse number 19, what does it say? Moshe Benu gets close to the camp. And he sees the calf and the dancing. You know, he sees all that, the parting going on. He got angry. And he throws, he casts the, 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 the tablets. He breaks them under the mountain. Which is something I always say to myself, wow, how did that happen? If godly, these godly tablets, how did they break? They must have been unbreakable. But no, we see they broke. And they were shattered. And the Talmud says that God agreed. You know, the Talmud says to Moshe Rabbeinu, Yashakok to Shibalta. Um, all the power to you that you broke the tablets. Now, if we look at the second tablets mentioned in, in chapter 34, it says um, in verse number one, Vayomer Hashem Moshe, Psol Chashnei Luchot Avanim Karishonim. God says to Moshe Rabbeinu, make yourself another set of tablets, right? And I'll write on the, on the tablets what was on the first ones that you broke. And then if you look in verse number 27, it seems to contradict a little bit. It says, God says, write the words on the tablets. So the sun doesn't make sense, right? Uh, before it says, God said, I will write on the second tablets, so I will write them. And here in verse number 27, it seems that Moshe Rabbeinu wrote on the tablets. And this is brought down in our commentaries, asked the question, the answer, 
basically is that these were Moshe Rabbeinu who brought the stones and also wrote on it, but um, God helped engrave them afterwards. That's one of the explanations given by the Meshach Chochmah. But what's really fascinating over here, and we have to pay attention to, is that what does it represent, these tablets, that were a creation, a direct creation of Hashem, and God's writing on it, and the second tablets. What was the difference of the levels? And that's exactly what we see here. And this is the point that Rav Kassiel wanted to bring down. He wanted to show that something really fascinating is that the, the first set of tablets show the uniqueness, right, of what it is when we say, I took you out of Egypt. God gave us something that's so special, right, that just shows the tablets represent Israel. What Israel really is as a nation when we reveal our faces, when we are, when the world recognizes who we are, they realize that like, that's like a new set of, that's like the first set of tablets that is totally godly, right? That's something that's really what the inner intrinsic makeup of Israel is all about, is represented in the first set. But when Israel at the Golden Calf didn't realize the level, they didn't rise to the hour, to who they are, and Moshe Rabbeinu broke those tablets, so now the second one was different already. That's, that was a situation where we have to go work hard in order to rectify those broken tablets. And therefore, the second one is on a total different level on the first one. Eventually, we're going to get back to that stage, as Rukuk says. It's going to take us thousands of years. We've been already passing many, many years, right, since we entered the land and had the war against the Canaanites and all the nations and all that, and throughout the history and our destruction of our temples, and now we're back and now we're moving forward before we recognize, you know, who we are and those tablets, you know, will be actually going back to the first level tablets um, we'll be receiving. And, and Rav Cook, and here I'd like to um, quote another portion of Cook where he talks about um, a great mistake that Israel may, has made. Uh, and, and that's really, again, that's delaying all our, our um, progress in the world and revealing who we are as the first set of tablets. And Rav Cook writes like this, he says, Ta'ud yisoditi. It's a great mistake to forget, you know, our in our yitro and our special advantage who we are. Right? To forget what it means that I have chosen you. What does it mean? God chose the people of Israel. Lorak mishunim anachnu bekol amin. Rav Kook says we're not just different from all nations. Says, not only we're, we're different, but we're different. If you look at our historical um, Israel, the history of Israel, of how we've survived, and what's, we're different in every way. Right? So not only, you know, historical changes, but we are Israel. He's talking about Israel's greatness. And this we've forgotten. If we know our greatness, then we'll know ourselves. Forget who we are, we're going to forget who we are. And a nation that forgets itself, surely is small and low. As long as we forget ourselves, we'll remain small. In other words, what Cook is saying, as long as we're going to forget who we are as a nation, we're going to remain small. And that's why Israel now is relying what's going on Israel relying on the world, you know, everything they're worried about, what they're going to say, every, every little thing, we, every little move we make, people have the nerve to, to say Israel is, is committing um, genocide. That's kind of ridiculous comment. Or Israel, you know, Israel every day, every single day is being condemned by the UN. Oh, every day, some other reason, find a reason to, to condemn Israel. And Israel's always trying to play up to that right away. Oh, what are we going to do? How do we have to act now to try to change the situation? That's not the way it works. The way it works is realizing who we are. What are that we are those luchot, we are those tablets, you know, the godly tablets. And, and the world is really waiting for, to, to see God shining on us, to be able to rectify the world. The world is waiting for it to, to be rectified. But when we're going to play just like, or like one, 
one class ahead of you or something. We're like, you know, up a couple of levels. You know, that's not, that's not going to change the situation. And then we have to play the game of, 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 you know, this game with the world. But we have to be who we are. We have to be who we were created to be as a nation. And that is really our, the rectification of the golden calf. The golden calf was, we want to be a nation like the other nations. Uh, no difference. Let's be a nation like the other nations of the world. Maybe a little more, you know, a little bit better in technology in certain things, in certain areas, advanced, a little more Nobel Prizes. But they would have sufficed with the Nobel Prizes and all that. But no, my friends, that is not what Israel has to be. Israel has to be its unique spiritual creation that God created us, that first tablets, that the light would be so powerful, the world would just stand there in awe and be rectified. And this sounds very, wow, you know, um, far-fetched and all that. No, it's not far-fetched at all. This, is, this requires our tremendous faith to come out and realize, to, to understand who we are as the nation of Israel. Okay, as mentioned before, we're not judging by individuals. You find individuals that have gone very far down, and we don't judge Israel by individuals. We judge Israel by who we are as, the, as our soul of our nation, which is a lighthouse to the world, and that has to come out. This is a beautiful thing. I would read this whole article of Cook. It's just long, and I can't go through all of it. But of Cook, I'll mention maybe a few more lines at the end here. Of Cook says, He a new shorafim lakum letchiyah. We want to come back to life just like our greatest of our forefathers. To be even greater than our forefathers. Because we've, got, we've given a lot of ethics in the world. Cook says Israel has been contributed a lot to the world in ethics and all kinds of, I mentioned before, in scientific contributions in all kinds of ways. We want to give life, the, 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 the inner essence of life to the world. Okay? Because the entire reality, the entire cosmos is within Israel, in that essence. We want to bring that life force out to the world. Right? We, if our cook says our spirit is not afraid of the times, it creates the times, and it will bring, it will give form to times. Very powerful words. I mean, these are deep things. Each word can be developed into an entire lesson just to talk about. So if we look again and try to summarize a little what we saw today, we saw how Israel... We were taken out of Egypt. God, the, the purpose was to take us out of Egypt, to give us those first tablets, that uniqueness of Israel. And Rav Kook, as he writes in, in, the, in, in, the, in his essay on war, but because of the golden calf, we were set back, but God willing, again we will rise to the occasion, we will rise to who we are, and we will overcome all this. And this is exactly the answer today to the world. The world coming against us in so many different ways. And looking at us in, in the wrong way, and that only comes from this, this continuation of that same sin of the golden calf. We have to rectify that. It's been rectified over the years. Slowly but surely, things are happening. We see how Moshe Rabbeinu prayed so hard to God to forgive. God wanted to turn Moshe Rabbeinu into, into, that, into, the, into the first um, luchot, to the first tablets, and forget about Israel. Of course, Moshe Rabbeinu, that, that, of course, that we have to understand what that means. That's a whole lesson in itself. But Moshe Rabbeinu didn't let, allow that to happen, right? God wanted him to pray for his nation, to show his love. And Moshe Rabbeinu reversed all that, of course. But still, we still are in that level that has to be rectified. And we will see, God willing, very soon. Things are moving at a pace we can't imagine. Things will happen much sooner than we think. Bezat Hashem, Bezorot Tovot, Shabbat Shalom. And... We will see, God willing, very soon, great miracles in the land. We're waiting for them. Shabbat Shalom.